so before we, we begin, I want to tell you a few words about me. I'm Elixir developer for more than two years. Uh, I worked on multiple large projects. One of them was National Health Service of Ukraine. And uh, tomorrow would be a talk about it. And I maintain more than 20 open source repos. And if you use them, please talk to me and give you feedback. And 20 is not a lot because we have like hundreds of them. It's nobody knows what you can find there. Um, so today we're going to talk about why do we need distributed trans transactions, uh, Saga's pattern, Sage library that implements it, and uh, as a bonus point, how can we use Saga's to better structure domain context? So imagine we're building a simple booking website. So to make to book a trip, you need to fetch currency exchange rates. Then we prioritize the card because we want to make sure that customer has enough money to make the booking. Then we book a hotel, send email confirmation, and then they charge the card to make like to take the actual money from the account. And we want to hold two invariants. So we should not charge card if we didn't fulfill the request, and we should not hold any bookings if we failed to charge the card. Otherwise, that's a bad business for us because we still pay for the bookings. And the way how, how we can implement that in Elixir looks like that. And for Erlang folks that not, don't know what is with syntax does, basically just compiles to nested cases. And if you have a um, um, like, uh, else block, you need all classes from the else block would be copied to all the cases. <coughs> so the code looks simple. And we definitely need to add some error handling to it. Uh, so let's see what errors we might have. And if, if, we, so if, if we failed on first two stages, that's OK. We don't have side effects. We can just return an error. And can like that's all. Uh, if you fail to book a hotel, that's still OK, because we have a prioritization. But the way how does it work is that it has a timeout. And after timeout is expires, we return the money automatically. So it's like side effect we don't need to care about, at least now. And uh, we don't care about uh, email delivery, because we can retry it. And the worst case, we still render the receipt in the UI. But if we fail to charge the card, we already have a we hold a booking and we need to cancel it. So we can use simple trick like wrapping a call to the billing with a tuple. It's this tap tuple has a name and list of side effects we need to deal with when we fail the stage. So we just pattern match on that and send excuse email because we already sent the receipt. Uh, cancel the booking and return an error. So real life is not like that and real life is hard. So let's make the problem harder. And imagine we don't only want to book a hotel, but we want to also want to book a car and a flight and do that within the same trip. So if we failed at one of the stages, uh, we need to, like, if we fail to do any booking, we need to cancel other ones. If we fail to charge a card, we need to cancel all of them. And if, uh, yeah, that's, that's the slide. Uh, so now, like, to, ha to handle that, we would, at second name stage, made code a little bit more messy, and we still manually go to collecting the side effects. And that's not all. Uh, it's bad because we cannot book concurrently. Uh, this syntax looks ugly because of the tuples, and we match on them. And it's hard to test because you need like complex injection uh, because like this block is blo large, and you need to tell fail there. It's it's rather hard. And the worst part of it is that when you have more edge cases to consider, it keeps growing and growing. And if we take the scenario when we send the request to the booking and didn't, didn't receive the response, uh, we may hold the booking without knowing about it. So to handle that, we would again add more name stages, splitting the booking into three. Uh, and imagine how much bigger it would be if we like want to cancel authorization earlier to don't cust make customer wait for its money or uh, something like that. So the code, code smells like a distributed transaction. And I believe it's complex only because it's actually a distributed transaction and we deal with it in ad hoc, ad hoc fashion. Sorry. S and in real life, distributed transactions are everywhere. Every time you deal with your CRM, with your payment processor, with the, um, any SaaS tool you like pay, for, pay for it, uh, or even with your own microservice. It's always distributed transaction, uh, and it's always 
complex, more complex than you think about it. And it's not about, like I'm not talking about research projects or enterprises that distribute because of their scale. It's just small and me medium-sized projects uh, because that's the way how wor like software development works in 21st century. You write your own core, but then you buy a bunch of uh, SaaS subscriptions because nobody likes to rain when they will. And can we do better? We can refactor this code, um, but we still help have the duplication of error handling. And um, it's, it's easy to update in, uh, in one of the places, but forget about the other ones. We can use two-phase commits, but they don't scale. Um, they spawn too many messages. They hurt availability because they place logs in all the places. And you simply won't get them because I don't know any service that gives you two-phase commits. And you cannot influence that. And there is Sagas. So Sagas is, fairly man is a fairly man management pattern. Uh, originates from 1987. Um, its original use case was about long-running tra transactions. And a good example of that transaction is uh, annual financial report. So you run it once a while. It takes a while to run. Uh, and you don't want to block your database while it's running. Uh, and the Saga's goal is to get rid of the logs, but still your entity's state, state is consistent after the execution is finished. So with say Saga, you trade off atomicity for availability. <coughs> uh, and the way how does it work is pretty simple. So we split transaction into multiple atomic steps. And a uh, real-world example is just, it's just a call to external service. It's already a step. It's already atomic. And then each step consists from transaction and compensation. And when transaction fails, compensation run to semantically undo its effects. And by saying semantically, I mean that there are some operations that cannot be undone. Uh, for example, if you send an email, email, you can't go and delete it from inbox. So you can send another one and say, sorry, we screwed up. Let's leave with it. And the, the, there's a requirement that transa transactions and compensations should be idempotent because you should be able to retry them without creating any further side effects. Uh, I say in practice, my compensations are like all, not always idempotent. It still works. But, but that's something you should consider. You should know what to do. And getting back to our book inside a site example. So with Saga, we define a two-way flow. First one, it's like, it's like it was before, but for each stage, we have a compensation fun function that knows how to clean effects rated on that stage. And the Saga goal is to like catch the failure and go to compensation stage and like clean up all the side effects created before it. So it's like having a step-by-step -step map. How do we get to the destination? And a plan B, how do we return home with a safe road? <coughs> and like Saga idea so sounds really awesome. Is there something we can use? And the answer is yes. There is two libraries, one for uh, Erlang called Gisla by my, my Mark Allen. And second one is Sage. Um, little disclaimer, I'm the author. Uh, so it's dependency free, purely C library. It's inspired by the paper, but provides sets of features on top of it. And for people familiar with Ecta, there is a nice quote that describes how is it to work with Sage. It's like Ecta Multi, but across your business logic and third-party APIs. So uh, internally, Sage is a data structure. You append it with some steps that you want to perform, and you only execute it when the struct is built. Uh, and when it's executed, Sage would do its best to either complete all the transactions or to run all the compensations to amend the partial execution. So the code sample really shows a lot of features, uh, even though it's like small. So we can go through them and see what it can help, like what it can done. So the first one is allows you to run transactions asynchronously. Basically, they spawned as a tasks, and they're not linked to the process that runs the stage. And the Sage itself runs the process like where you execute it, so it doesn't spawn anything without you knowing about it. Um, before the next sequence operation, Sage will await for the spawn task because we want 
uh, all synchronous stages have access to all the effects created before them, when the asynchronous stages don't need access to each other effects. Uh, it makes it easy to implement retries. Uh, they work like a checkpoint, so you can decide from which stage you want to apply forward recovery. You can set number uh, like limit to for retries. You can use exponential backoff and a jitter. And uh, in this example, we roll back from booking stage. Like we, we roll, roll back all the bookings and they apply again. But nothing stops us from like roll, like retry on the stage we failed. Um, and to define a save point, you just still write your compensation. It still does its job, and you just tell the stage like, "Hey, from this stage, I want to retry for a limit limited number of times." And uh, retry count is global for all the executions. So we have five here and five elsewhere. If we execute the five, it fails. Uh, this is due to because we don't want to keep retrying definitely, so we don't want to play ping pong with the retries. And the uh, third, uh, third uh, like large feature is circuit breakers. They are very, very useful when we failed, but we can continue the execution with the, um, some predefined value. For example, here we want to fetch current security rates because there's li that's like our currency risks for a business, but if the service is not available. We can like use the cash value, take the risk if that's not too often, and live with that. Uh, and circuit breakers allow you to make your service reliable without depending on reliability of third-party API. And in terms of implementations, they like pretty much the same as retries. Uh, the only limitation that you can only apply a circuit breaker on the stage when you failed, bec because we don't want to accidentally start for the for the forward recovery when we're already trying to compensate the transaction. And there's more. There is a final callback that executed when stage succeeds or fails. There is an um, instrumentation events that you can receive to log the stage names or you can measure the execution time. Uh, it's easier to test, which is pretty much like with Phoenix controllers. So you don't write a lot of tests for controller. You make sure that composition works and then you test low level stuff separately. And um, it works with, with Ecta, so we can wrap a stage within the transaction. If you have a code that works as local database, you can still rely on its transactional properties. And um, what's next? Yeah. So let's see what kind of errors we might have and how, how stage can handle them. So first one is there's error in transaction, like unmatched return or just execution. Uh, stage would catch that and start compensations. If there's error in compensation, Sage would raise an exception and expect developer to, to like deal with it. But there is a way to write an adapter and, uh, and assign it to Sage. So instead of uh, writing an exception, Sage will send an event to that adapter with this kind of ex execution state. So you can, uh, for example, check the availability of third-party service and retry the execution after it's available again. And there are bugs in Sage, maybe. And I don't know, <laughs> but if there, it's done handled. Yeah, like, like, that's all. Like, you have a bug, you crash. Uh, but there are things to come. First one, uh, in the bug backlog is uh, stuck execution log. So we're going to persist execution state to the persistent storage. So even if the node or process failure crashes, you can tolerate that. You can fix the bug, deploy new version to production, and then retry your execution. To complete this, to finish the side, like to get rid of the side effects, um, and there is a plan to add the, the laser integration, so it would warn you if you build this drug that won't work in production, which is very useful. So we do write less tests, and it helps you to make your domain context better. Uh, it's very similar to Active Multi, so you can uh, build this drug in top level, like in top level API and call a bunch of contexts, and they basically they just append to the structure, and everything is executed with, within the same transaction. So if you have a failure in context B, uh, and you don't know about it, that's still okay. Everything is rolled back, and you don't have anything left after the error. And for large applications, it's very beneficial because it like, gives you a new way to think about failure management, and structuring, because instead of using the just placing code all around, 
you just um, write your context that append <laughs> operations to a single transaction. And the only thing you need to keep track of is dependencies between stages because they tend to depend on each other. But you don't make calls between code to like undo something. That's handled automatically. And uh, so, short recap, you can use Sagas to synchronize tight across microservices, but it's a very bad example because uh, with microservices, you have a lot of things to consider, like not, not use them at all. Uh, we synchronize state across databases, uh, which pretty much the same as microservices. Why do you have multiple databases? Um, and to run these bit transactions, which is a place where stage fit the best, because we deal with a uh, third party API, which is unlikely to change on our demand, it's not very available, and uh, it's uh, completely out of our control. And Sage project is pretty young, but it's well documented and covered with tests. Like I get like 100% coverage, but I don't know what cases did I missed, as always. And that's all. Thank you.